Now, that is one type of problem. This is another type of problem which we are given more information, but the steps we need to be a bit more careful in handling that. What we want to do? We want to find the volume of the solid bounded by the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to 4 and the planes y plus z equals to 4 and z equals to 0. A lot of information that we have, but it's how we carefully use that information. Alright, first things first. Notice that it says volume of the solid bounded by the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to 4. Now, you might be thinking that this is a circle. Well, in fact, it is a circle. Alright, but why is it a cylinder? Well, basically, we're in a three-dimensional space. So, any point that satisfies this equation is considered in the three-dimensional space. In this case, we call z as arbitrary because z can take any value. Well, that is certainly the case here. z takes any value. This equation is still satisfied as long as we have a point that is lying on the, on the circle x squared plus y squared extended up. I hope you can see that. This is the circle given by x squared plus y squared. So basically, we just extend the circumference up. We got a point here, we got a point here. All these are arbitrary points of z, but they still satisfy the equation because, you know, if you extend down, you know, they still satisfy this equation over here. They lie around the circle. So that, that's what it just basically means. Graph the circle and then extend it up, extend it down. Okay, so that is the equation of the cylinder. Okay, so the cylinder is what we have over here. Again, extend it up, extend it down. The plane at the bottom is z equals to zero. So it's I, essentially the plane, the x and y plane. Okay, it's essentially the x and y plane. No, and, um, no funny stuff about that. And the other plane is y equals y plus z equals to four. Now, as you can see here, x is not inside, but that is okay because um, you just start thinking about it, you will see that the plane is parallel to the x-axis. Again, like x is arbitrary in this case, but it doesn't matter. What we can do, we can rearrange for z to get this equation over here. Why? Because later, remember, we always need z equals to the function of x and y. Um, this will not make much sense if you want to, you know, basically you just need to rearrange it so that it's in terms of x and y. All right. Now, good thing is that we have already an idea of what region R is. Region R is basically the region that is inside the circle, okay? Because if we extend the cylinder up and down, region R is going to be that area of the circle. So, what I've done again, I've mapped region R over here, okay? Um, equation of the circle, you know, is minus 2 and 2 because the radius is 2. So, now comes the problem of um, def identifying or defining region R in terms of a type 1 region. Well, this is what we're going to do. Again, draw the vertical line, go down, okay? Now, what is the equation of this over here, okay? This bottom arc of the circle. Now, you got the circle equation over here, so we can rearrange it as y equals to 4 take away x squared. But remember, when we want to specify the lower limit of the partial integration in y, we always need this, y equals to g1x. We always need y, which in this case is a function, written in terms of x. So, in essence, this doesn't really make sense for us to use it to define the limits because it is y squared. Now, we can take the square root. So when we take the square root, we got 4, take away x squared. But is this the only square root that we have? Because this square root will describe the top of the circle. We need the other square root. And this is very important, 4, take away x squared, because this describes the bottom of the circle. And this would be our g1x. Sorry, minus. Yep. As you know, this is going to be y equals to the positive square root of 4 take away x squared. Right, so with this in mind, now we can start writing out the limits. Now, x shouldn't be a problem, it's from minus 2 to 2. So, writing out formally again, we want to find the double integral of what? Again, of the equation of the surface, in this case, is z equals to 4 take away y. Okay, x is not there, it's okay. Region R, elementary area, and then writing it as the iterative integral. First, the x limits, what do we have? Minus 2, 2, and then we will have negative square root 4 take away x squared and the positive square root 4 take away x squared and retain the function 4 take away y, partial integrate with respect to y and then with respect to x. And this is a very, very common problem in a multivariable calculus course. Define the circle properly. Some people might put this as zero. Some people, even worse, might put this as the positive square root, thinking that when you take the square root of the circle, that is all you have. It's not the case. Why is that so? Well, you see, because we can't write this entirely as a function of y equals to in terms of x. Because, after all, it's not a function at all. You pick a value of x, you get two values, one up here and one down here. 
So that, that is why, you know, we need to do all this, write the positive square root and write the negative square root. But once you get that, you are back in business and all you have to do is just evaluate it. You'll get a minus 2, you'll get an 8, uh, a square root 4, take away x squared. Because remember, when you substitute these limits, they are already in terms of x. So you get an equation in terms of x. Integrate that in terms of x and the final answer is 16 pi. Okay? And there you have it, two very typical finding value problems that utilizes the double integral. Um, general steps, just look at the equation of the surface first. Is it a plane? Graph it out. If it's a surface, maybe it's a bit more difficult, but then after that, find region R, okay? If you know it's bounded by coordinate planes, region R is there. Uh, you can map it to an XY plane if you want to, so that you can see it more clearly, okay? Or like I did over, here, did over here, and then later define that region properly using either the type 1 or type 2 method, okay? So that is where you have it, and I think, you know, we'll settle down in terms of double integrals in Cartesian coordinates. Next lesson is polar coordinates, so hope you're ready for that, okay? Thanks.